Here we have a pendulum. It's a big, huge lead fishing weight on fishing line. And we're going to pull it up to beaker. And we're going to have it touch the weight, touch the nose of beaker. And what we're trying to test to see, when we let go of the pendulum weight, will it rise as high as the nose? So here's the beaker's viewpoint, his eyeballs. We let it go. And it doesn't reach as high as his nose ever. And why is that? Why would it never reach as high as before? And you can see right here, this is four times the speed it's slowing down. Well, let's look at the science. This is a diagram of a pendulum. And when you pull back on the pendulum and let it go, it takes a specific path that makes the weight of the pendulum go back and forth and back and forth. Well, the big question is, well, how does this all work? What are the forces involved? So let's take a look at that. So here's the pendulum, and the dotted path represents the motion path that it takes back and forth. And so let's look at the forces. So main force shown by the red arrows is gravity. Earth's gravity is pulling on the way of the pendulum toward the center of the Earth. Next, we have the wire applying a centripetal force. Those are the green arrows. Centripetal force up toward the ceiling. And basically, the centripetal force is the force applied to an object that's moving in a circular path. Centripetal force is toward the center of that circular path. Next, the motion path is the dotted line in white. And let's not forget also inertia comes into play. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. So in this case, the pendulum weight is in motion. It wants to remain in motion and it's specifically going in a straight line to an unbalanced force causes it to change direction, slow down, or speed up. So in yellow, the yellow arrows as the pendulum goes left to right shows the path that the weight wants to take because of its inertia. And going from right to left, the yellow arrows show the same thing. So if you were to cut the wire holding the pendulum as it's moving, the, the weight of the pendulum would go off in a straight line. OK, so all, all this is taken into consideration on how the pendulum actually works. One thing else we need to consider is, well, when you let go of the pendulum like to start it, it's never going to get as high as it started off with. And it's eventually going to stop over time. Well, why is that? Well, here's the motion path of the pendulum. And the opposite direction of that motion is fluid friction. So the weight's hitting against the molecules of air. And so that air resistance, or fluid friction, it, it's an outside and bounce force that delicately or slightly reduces the speed of the pendulum. So over time, it is going to eventually stop.